Welcome to episode 4 of How to Create Your First Game in GDevelop 5. We're going to pick up right where we left off at the end of episode 3. We've set up some of the player ship, some of the enemy ship, and uh, got the score working in the GUI up here. In today's episode, what I want to spend our time on is working some more on the player ship, connecting its lives, and allowing it to take damage, be destroyed, and spawn back into the scene. And that's probably going to take up the whole episode here for episode four. So let's get into that. In order to take lives away from the player's ship, I don't want it to lose a life every time it collides with an enemy. I want it to have a health, so it has to be hit a certain number of times before it's actually destroyed. So how we're going to handle that is in the player ship, I want to add an object variable to this player's ship. I'm going to call that health. I'm going to set its starting value at 3. Of course you could set this to some other number if you wanted it to take 5 hits or 2 hits or whatever you want for your game. In this tutorial we're going to use 3. So it'll take 3 hits between the enemy and the player to actually destroy one of the player's lives. So let's first make this player ship lose health when and if it collides with an enemy ship. In the gameplay events, we're going to set that up. We're going to add a new event for that. And the condition is, if the player ship is in collision with the enemy ship. And remember, both the player ship and enemy ship have the physics behavior attached to them. So you want to make sure and use this collision that is set up for physics objects. Or else it won't work right. If you were to choose the standard object collision for non-physics objects, this would not work correctly. So just make sure you choose collision with this little physics icon next to it. So for the action, we want to remove one from that variable we just set up for the player ship, the health. So I'm going to add an action. Because the health is part of the player ship object, I'm going to click player ship. And then in our list, we can get to its variables. I can scroll down and find it down here. Modify a variable of an object right under variables. Now we're given a list of all the objects variables. In our case it only has one health. So I'm going to choose that. And I want to subtract one from that variable when the player collides with the enemy. Now we can't see that happen right now. There's no feedback for that in our game. So temporarily I'm going to change this lives readout to health. And then we can see and double check that this is indeed working as expected. So in the last episode we set up this text display for the score. I'm going to set up a readout just like that for that lives. GUI display. So temporarily I'm going to change lives to health. So for lives I want to modify the text of that. And I want to set that text equal to health. I'm going to put a plus. That's how you add extra text onto the text you're displaying. Now I want to display that variable that's contained within the player's ship object. So I'm going to click on player ship. And I could start typing variable here, but you can also see 
there is a list of potential things I can choose that are automatically displayed after player ship. I want to choose variable string. And then I'm going to use that name, health. That's the name of the variable we just set up. So now if we play this, where it says lives, it's going to say health because we just changed that and it should keep count of the player's health. Let's check that out. So it does say health. It says three. Let me see if I can collide with the enemy ship. Now you'll see it went down to two. Now down to one. And as I collide, it continues to go down. We haven't set anything up to make it happen or to make it lose a life when it gets to zero. So it can go into negative numbers right now. It's all the way down to negative 10. So we want to fix that, of course. I just wanted to make sure the health variable was working as expected. So let's continue to work with this a little bit. The first thing we want to do here is I want to add a condition to this. And I don't think it really happened. We didn't see it happen in the game. But if this enemy ship were to come over now and kind of stop and collide with me for an extended period of time, I would lose a bunch of lives from that. It would, lives would go down very quickly because it remains in contact with this player ship. So we want that to only happen once for every collision. So I'm going to add a condition to this. And in the search box, I'm going to start typing once. I want to choose this trigger once while true. So now every time the enemy collides with the player, it'll only do these actions once and then it won't do it again until the player is no longer colliding with the enemy and the enemy then re-collides with the player. Now the next thing to set up with this would be when the health of the player's ship equals zero. We want to destroy that player ship because it's going to lose a life. So we're going to add a new event for that. And the condition I'm going to check for is that player ship. I want to check the value of an object's variable. Again, we're going to check health. I'm going to say if health is, let's say, less than or equal to zero. So if this player ship's health reaches zero, I want to remove or destroy the player ship from the scene. I'm going to choose the player ship and then again towards the bottom of the list here there is delete an object. So now when the player's health equals zero, the player should be deleted from the scene. Let's check that out. Now it happened quickly, but you'll see the health equals nothing and the player has been deleted from the scene. So of course we would want to spawn a player back in here now as long as they had enough lives left. And again, this was temporarily changed to health. They should have two lives left. But let's work with that lives a little bit now. In addition to deleting the player ship, the next thing we want to do is reduce the live count by one. So I'm going to add another action. And there's a global variable for lives that we had set up. So I'm going to search for variables. And I want to do the value of a global variable. That variable is lives. I want to subtract 1. When the player dies, we'll subtract a life. So let's update this text to be correct to lives now instead of health. 
I'm just going to set this health to now say lives. And then we need to delete this. And I'm going to start typing variable. So we're looking for a global variable. And that global variable was named lives. So this will now display the correct value. We need to set that first though. When we set up the lives variable in an earlier episode, we had left it set at zero. So now we want to update that to three. So now lives actually has a value of three. So let's play test this. So that's one hit. That was enough hits to take three health away. And now I'm down to lives two. Now we certainly need some feedback when the enemy and the player ship collide. Right now, if I wasn't watching and saying that I was hit once or twice, we wouldn't even know that that happened. So what I want to do there is I want to add a sound and I also want to make the player ship flash red when it takes damage from the enemy ship. So let's do that. The sound is going to be the easy part. Let's add a sound to that when the player is colliding with the enemy right here. We want to play a sound. So in the search box, I'm just going to start typing sound. I want to play a sound. I'm going to choose a new audio file that we can load in. As always, these assets are available for download at my website. So I'm going to choose the collide.wave. I'm going to leave the volume and pitch set at their defaults. That'll be fine. I'm going to copy this. And remember, if we want a sound to play immediately, we want to load it at the beginning of the scene up here in this routine. So I'm going to paste that action right in here. And then for this one, I want to change the volume to zero. So you can't hear it when the scene first loads. So now that sound will be available in play immediately when the enemy and player collide. Let's check that out. Well, it happened quick, but the sound played and I lost a life. So now we also want to make that player flash red. So making the player flash red is going to take a couple steps. The first thing I want to do is add a timer. We're going to use a timer to turn on and off the flashing of the player. So in this at the beginning of the scene condition and action up here, I want to add a couple actions. I'm going to start in the search box typing timer. I first want to start or reset a scene timer, which is actually going to just create the timer for us. So I'm going to do that. Then you have to name a timer. You have to put it in quotes. I'm going to call it player flash. You have to name a timer because you could have multiple timers and you have to have a name so gdevelop5 knows what timer you want to deal with when it comes time to deal with it. So you have to name them and of course remember the names that you give them. I want to add another action here. After we create the timer, I immediately want to pause that timer. So I started searching for time again and I'm going to say pause a scene timer. And I want to pause flash player. Oops, I named that wrong. Let's call it player flash. There we go. 
they do have to be named the same thing. So this will create a timer and immediately pause the timer as soon as the scene loads. And then we're going to use that timer down here and some other conditions. So when the player collides with the enemy, we're going to add a new action here to turn that player red. I'm going to add an action. And to the player ship, I want to change its tint. And that's an option down here towards the bottom. Under effects, there's tint color. I'm going to choose that. And then in quotes, you can put in RGB values here. And that will change the tint of the object. So I'm going to put in 255, semicolon 0, semicolon 0. And that will turn our player red when it collides with the enemy. Let's check that out. If we play this now, and I get hit, you'll see the player is now red. Now we want to use the timer to turn the player back to its normal color. I don't want it to stay red like this. So in addition to changing the player's color right here when they collide with the enemy, we want to start this timer as soon as the player gets hit. So I'm going to add another action. Search for timer. And then I want to unpause the scene timer. Of course the scene timer I want to unpause is player flash. So what's going to happen now? When the enemy collides with the player you're going to lose one health, it's going to play the sound, the player ship turns red, and this timer that we've created will start counting. Now we're going to add a new event to watch that timer's value. Again, I'm going to search for time, timer, and I want to check the value of a scene timer. Let's put in one second here, see how that works. You put in the time in seconds that you want to watch for, and then the timer's name that you want to watch. Again, player flash. So when that equals one, when the timer player flash is greater than one second, I just want to turn that player ship back to its normal coloring. I'm going to go back to the tint color, and in the quotes, I'm going to change the color to 255, 255, 255. And that should turn it back to its normal coloring of the object, this coloring right here. So let's check that out and make sure it works right. See when they collide, there they go, the sound played and the player ship turned red. It turned red for too long, in my opinion. I think it needs to be a lot faster than that. Let's go back to the gameplay events and make this one second. Let's make it a quarter of a second. So you can just click on this one right here and edit that value like that. You don't have to double click it and go into the whole thing. You can click on any of these values and edit them right here in the list. So let's check that out. That's much better. The player ship just flashes. It doesn't turn red and stay red for a long period of time. And I think I like that better. So now that we have some feedback, we can tell when the player is actually being hit. We still need to spawn it in here and keep track of it for up to its three lives once it's destroyed. So let's take a look at that next. In order to get that spawning to work right, we're going to have to add a couple new global variables. So I'm going to go to the global variables. I'm going to add two of those. I'm going to add one called 
player alive. I'm going to add a second one called game in play. So I'm going to set player alive to zero. I'm going to set game and play to one. What these are going to keep track of, player alive is actually going to keep track of if there is a player that's able to be used and played, displayed in this game play scene, in this arena. In game and play, we're not really going to use in this episode but before this whole series is over, we're going to have a splash screen that displays before you will play the game. And that game and play is going to keep track of whether we should be displaying the splash screen or the gameplay scene. So I'm just setting that up now and I'm going to use it in the events now just to have it there ahead of time. It's really the player alive that we're going to be using in the events right now. So when player alive is zero, there's going to be no player on screen and the events will know to spawn a new player. If the player alive is one, there's going to be a player that's able to be used here and you will just play the game. So let's go to events. Actually, before we do that, you'll see I have a player placed in here now. We don't want that anymore. We're not going to need that. So I'm going to delete that player because we're going to be spawning one with our events. So we're going to set up an event that's going to check for some of these new variables that we just built. They were global variables, so I'm going to start to search here. So we want to check the value of a global variable. First thing we want to do is see if the game is in play. If game is in play is equal to 1, then the game is actually able to be played. Then we want to check for the global variable player alive. If that equals zero, there's no player ship in the scene and we're going to need to spawn one. We also want to make sure that the player has enough lives in order to spawn another ship. So we need to check for one more. We need to check lives. Make sure that is greater than zero. I'm going to pull this up. I just want it up here more towards the top. So if the game is in play and the player is not already in the scene and you have enough lives to spawn a ship, we're going to go ahead and spawn a player ship. I'm going to add an action. I'm going to spawn the player ship. And down here in this list is create an object. Once you choose to create your object, in this case a player ship, you need to give it an X and Y position to display on screen. I'm just going to put zeros in here for now. We're going to come back and put actual values in here in one second. What I want to happen is I want our player to always display or always spawn right in the center of the scene. From top to bottom and from right to left, always right about here. Now we know our scene is, I believe it was 1280 by 720. So I could divide those numbers by two and actually hard code those values right in here. I don't want to do that. I want to make this flexible enough that if this if I wanted to change the size of my gameplay area later, I don't need to change hard-coded values in here. So what you can do is you can check 
for whatever size your screen is and then divide that by two. So I'm going to take this zero out. And what I want to check for is the scene window for the exposition scene window width. Since I want it in the middle, I want to divide that by two. And then the same for the Y position. I want to check for scene window height and divide that by two. You could choose a specific layer to spawn your object on. I'm not using different layers in this project, so I'm just going to leave this alone. You don't have to put something here. So now when I play this, we should get a player ship displaying on screen. It's not going to look exactly right, and we'll look at that next. When I display it, we do now have a player here. It's too big, and it also doesn't appear to be centered. And you can see it spawning about a billion player ships. We're going to fix all that stuff right now. Remember we have the player alive equal to zero. That means to go ahead and spawn a player. So after we spawn a player, we need to set player alive to one. That's what I'm gonna do right now. I clicked add an action over here. And I wanna check again that global variable. I wanna change the value of player alive. I want to set that equal to one. So now it will only spawn one player ship. Let's check that out. It's still too big. It still doesn't appear to be centered. But now you'll see it does play correctly. It's not spawning a million player ships. So that worked well. So what we want to do is because the player ship is a little bit too large. Let's check the size of it here in Piscal. It's 134 pixels by default. I only want it to be 100. So I'm just going to cancel out of all of that. And then back here in the gameplay events, I'm going to add a couple more actions. I want to change the size of the player ship to the correct size. So I'm going to change the height. I'm going to make that equal to 100. I'm also going to set the width equal to 100. So let's check that out. It should now be sized correctly. And it is. It's a little bit smaller. It's more in line with the enemy ship. But it still didn't appear to be exactly centered. Let me restart this. It, the reason it doesn't appear to be exactly centered is because in that object, let's go into the player ship. When you click right here, edit points, every object has a couple of default points automatically applied to it. And you can also add your own points for special use, which is super handy. We're not gonna do that right now, but we are gonna edit one of these points. Every object gets an origin and a center. The origin is always the upper left-hand corner right here where this red plus sign is. That's the origin point. And then of course the center point is right here. It's the yellowish one. And when I'm spawning that player, it's using its origin as the spawn point. So what I wanna do is drag that origin about down to the center. And remember, I just checked the size of that. The, the default size of this actor was 134 by 134 pixels. So that makes the center 67 pixels. 
So I'm just going to update these manually to exactly 67 pixels for X and 67 pixels for Y. So the origin of the player is now also actually the center. Now let's preview that. Now you can see it's centered exactly top to bottom and left to right. And that's good. That's perfect. But still, when the player gets destroyed, it's not actually spawning a new one yet. We have that almost complete, but not quite. All I have to do is change this player alive value right down here to when the player ship gets deleted and it's subtracting a life. Now we want to change that player alive global variable. We want to set that equal to zero. And the game will then use this routine to spawn a new player as long as you have enough lives to play. So I should be able to play until my player's lives equals zero. So let's check that out. I got hit, hit. I can't get hit when I want to. I didn't seem to be up. Oh, I'm not flashing red a second or a third time. We're going to fix that in just a second. That's why you play test. Let's make sure I get my three lives and don't continue to spawn. Come back here. There. So lives equal zero, and I'm no longer spawning player ships. That is correct. But let's fix that flashing. I was only flashing the first hit. In all subsequent hits, I was not flashing, if you didn't notice. So right down here, in this event where we were changing the player's color back to its normal color after the flash, I need to reset this timer so it's available to continue watching to see if it should flash again. What was happening when I don't reset it, it just keeps on counting forever. So it never reaches 0.25 seconds again. It would go to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 however many seconds or minutes you're playing the game for. What we want to happen when the flash is over, I want to reset that timer and also pause it again. So I'm just going to copy these two events from right up here. I highlighted them both by holding down my shift key and clicking on them. I'm going to copy them. I'm going to come down here and paste them in place. So now the player ship will turn back to normal color. It will reset the timer back to zero, and then it will pause that timer. So when I collide again, it'll start the timer, flash, and do everything it's supposed to do. Let's check that out. Can't get hit when I want to. All right, there's one flash. There we go. It flashed every time the player hits the enemy. Perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. I think that's going to wrap up this tutorial for today. We've done a lot of work here. Make sure and come back for episode 5, and we'll keep this project going. Have fun making games.